sometimes I feel like a star, but only strictly where I'm famous. I'm in this foot along this hall, like we'll see where it takes us. I'm throwing back these double shots like whiskey here is weightless. Cause, cause this career I chose was even riskier than Vegas, yo. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Colby Rebel Show. I am your host, Colby Rebel, where my goal is to answer that question or make that connection. So please be sure to put your question or connection in the comments, and I will get to as many as I can tonight. Uh, just a couple things uh, to note kind of coming up. We have some amazing events coming your way. So this coming Sunday, I'm very, very excited to teach a workshop on building your spiritual business. And this is for my dear friend, Allison Gannon. She is um, working through stage four cancer at the moment. And so Allison put together this spirit camp. It's a five-day phenomenal camp. So you can still get tickets. It actually started Wednesday. Um, and you can get tickets to attend all the events. So my events are Sunday. So I'm teaching the how to build your spiritual business. So we're doing that in the morning. So right here. And that is going to be followed by an evening of spirit messages, which is right here. So both of these, all proceeds are going to Allison to help her uh, fight her battle with cancer. Allison's a huge person in our community. You may have seen her on the show last weekend. So please support Allison, support her cause and Maybe you get a message from a loved one while you're at it, right? So we have that coming up. And then on the 26th is also another event where it is Global Soul Gathering. And again, it's another giving messages, inspiration from spirit. And this is also online. So this will be Saturday, August 26th for all of my U.S. friends. And for my Australian friends, it's Sunday the 27th at 10 a.m. So we have those coming up. Now, the circles are right around the corner. So if you're looking to develop your spiritual gifts, whether it's your psychic, mediumship, beginner, advanced, you name it, we've got something for you. So we have the advanced circle, which is starting uh, September 5th. That's a Tuesday night. So we have the circle. It's four weeks long. And then we have the beginner's circle. So we have that as well. And that's Wednesday night. So be sure to join us. And then one last thing I want to talk about on this episode is dinner with spirit. Now you have to be in New Jersey for this, or at least be able to get to New Jersey. But this is dinner with spirit. And what's amazing is that your entire dinner is included in the ticket. Um, and this is really fun. We've done it at Adelphia's for the last few years. It just sells out every year. So very, very excited about that. So, okay. Now I know we have a couple callers here. We have some questions uh, in the in the feed here. So let's see what we could do. Uh, let's bring on Liz here. Hi, Liz. How are you? Hi. I'm well, Bobby. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing well. What can I do for you tonight? Um, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'd love to connect uh, with a um, family member. Unfortunately, I have a couple up there. Uh, whoever feels like they have a message that they'd like for me to uh, receive from you today. Okay. Liz, for me, um, the first person that comes through is a male for you, that I feel like there's a male on the other side. And maybe he's a little younger when he passes. That's kind of the feeling I get around him. And this would have been a quicker passing, maybe something that the family wasn't expecting, um, a little bit of like sudden news. So would you understand that around the younger, uh, a male who wasn't as old when he passes? Yeah. Okay. And who would this be for you, honey? Is this a brother or a friend? Um, we grew up as brothers. Okay. Got it. Okay. He comes, he's the one who really comes through first and foremost. He gives me a little bit of a macho feel around him. So... I get, I get the sense that, you know, he was always ready to stand up for something or wasn't going to get pushed around. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And I really get the sense around him, too. I, 
I don't know if it's just that he had tattoos on his arms, but I just keep feeling like sense of tattoos with him as well. Can you understand yes. that? Okay, good. Yes. What's also interesting, Liz, I don't know if this is necessarily his name, but do you connect to an M, like an M name? Like, um, I don't know if it's Mark, Mark Well, Mark is something like that. Do you connect with that name, sweetheart? And M name, yes. Okay. Um, can you tell me what that M name is then, if it's not the Mark Miriam? Okay, got it. Uh, I felt this was more a male, though. So Miriam would be a female, correct? Yeah. Okay. I feel like this is more of a male name, so I'm going to leave that with you. It doesn't connect in the moment, okay? Okay. Um, but what I really get around this, this male coming in, I just feel with him, it's almost like we always had to kind of worry about what he was up to. Like, I feel like he was always kind of getting in trouble or up to something, and you know, I feel like we were always worried about him. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. He gives me that a lot. I, again, he kind of, it's interesting because he brings me back to an altercation. So I'm wondering if you can understand an altercation or sometimes he was getting in these fights, something like this. You understand yeah. that? Okay. Also, I, I do feel like there was a point where he might have been mixing himself with the wrong crowd as well. Like we were trying to kind of talk some sense into him, he says. So do you yeah. understand that? He shows me a cross, a, a cross. So I know he was of faith, though. I get the sense that he was of faith or maybe he even wore a cross. So do you know if he wore a cross? Or? Yes, he did. And he was of faith. Okay, because he gives me he gives me that. The other thing, too, is it's interesting where he, I'll tell you what's also interesting. He shows me a little... I don't know if somebody has a little tattoo behind their ear. I know that sounds weird, but do you know if someone has like a little tattoo back here? I don't think not that's cool. I don't think like somebody got a tattoo for him. Maybe his um his wife. Okay. Maybe find out if there's something back here or a connection to a tattoo or she understands the tattoo right around the neck area. Okay. And he also gives me he also gives me the feeling, too, of a baby. So would you understand him having a baby in the living prior to his passing? Yeah. Could he, I also feel like this may have been a son. So am I correct that it would have been a son for him in the living? No. Okay, it's a daughter then. Yeah. It's interesting because he gives me this baby, and he gives me a lot of love around this baby, but I also feel like this baby was very young when he passed away. So I, I, I feel like the baby would have been younger when it passed away. Do you understand that? Maybe my son. Yeah. Okay. Would you, and would he have been a little baby? Like he just gives me a sense of a, a young, a young baby. Yeah. Okay. I do believe it's your son just because I felt like there was a son. I felt like it was a boy. Okay. Yeah. And I really get, um, I also get the sense too where I feel like, with him i i feel yep. like you you know he always shows me dark sunglasses so i think he might have always had dark sunglasses on or something <laughs> yeah you know he yeah. gives me like i think it's it's interesting because i think to the outside world or people he tried to look like he was a real tough guy but i think with people close to him he is kind of a softy just a real kind of teddy bear that sort of thing you understand that and he also shows me cards so i think he either was gambling or maybe taking risks or something like that. So do you understand that with him? Wagering, money, money, betting, something like this. Yes. Okay. I don't want to wag a finger at him, but he might have done some things that maybe weren't totally legal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, but we'll just kind of leave it there. We're going <laughs> to leave it with it, okay? Yeah. I know. I know he comes forward tonight like a breath of fresh air. Liz, honey, I feel like I feel like you might be involved in something where you're being forced to stand up for yourself. So I, there may be a situation around you where it's like you needing to stand up for yourself, maybe having some boundaries around people taking advantage is the sense he's giving me. And he keeps saying, like, you know, you have to kind of stand up and fight back. It's like you're letting kind of people maybe push you around or take over. And he's like, you know, you have to stand up. And so I feel like that's why he wanted to come in tonight to be the first and foremost to talk to you, okay? Okay. And so just know that and know that he's with you. And this, there's also like this difficulty, which also may be connected to finances 
And he's just kind of letting you know that this is going to work itself out, that it's going to be okay. All right. Okay. So there may be a little bit of a transition that you're in the middle of, uh, but he keeps giving me like, he's kind of wiping his brow saying, you know what? Don't sweat this. This is going to work out just okay. All right. I know it's going to be okay. All right. All right. And I do want to say, oddly enough, I keep seeing butterflies around you. So I feel like butterflies are a sign for you, honey. Do you understand that? Absolutely. Okay, All great. Time. Good. Sure. Perfect. So just know that that's your sign, and I will leave you with that, sweetheart, okay? Thank you so much, Colby. You are welcome. Have a beautiful night. Thank you. You as well. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, beautiful, everybody. We love when those messages come through. Uh, we have another volunteer here. Let's bring in Miss Stephanie. Hi, Colby. Hi, Stephanie. How are you, honey? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And what can I do for you tonight? So I had written in to either maybe connect with my dad or okay. a love life update, whatever okay. you want. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, let's start with dad and see if he has any input on the love life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me see when I, you know, your dad, when I tune into your dad, there's something about him that feels so relatable, Stephanie. I, I don't know. I just, he feels to be professional. Like, I think he was a professional person. Uh, I feel like he really tried to be there for you a lot. Do you understand that? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. I, my grandpa. <laughs> oh, that's your grandpa. Okay. So, hey, so your grandpa may be coming in first. So are you okay if we talk to him first? Yeah. No. So, so what's interesting is your grandfather may have taken the role as a father for you in your life because that's why when I connect and say who wants to say hi and he's like, yep, I'm her dad. <laughs> so yeah. you understand that? Yeah. Okay. So I want to talk to granddad first because what I get around him is this kind of relatability, almost like he was doing his best to be relatable to you, doing his best to kind of be there for you, doing his best to kind of give you a lot of love and a lot of nurturing. Do you understand that? And just someone who like, I think in some ways he tried to be more energetic or useful than maybe he was even feeling. Like almost trying to kind of keep up with your energy a bit. So he gives me that, you know, like I feel like you would keep him on his toes a lot, you know? So he gives me that. He also shares with me a sense where I feel like, you know, he gives me the impression that maybe you're very sensitive, Stephanie, that you can feel a lot and you're emotional and things like that. So you understand that? <laughs> and so I feel like he would very much try to be there for you and very much try to hold the space for you. OK. And and it is like I will just say I feel like you might have lived with him at some point or spent a good amount of time with him. Would that make sense as well? Because. I'll just be honest, and this might be, we, we might be going back in time to when you're younger, but I almost like sometimes he could hear you cry and it would break his heart and he didn't know how to fix it. And so it would just like kind of tear him up. And so he'd go and try to like buy you a little treat or kind of brighten you up. Like, I just feel like that was his way of like, oh, I don't know what to do or say. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but that was his idea. He also gives me the feeling, Stephanie, there's something about school for you like he gives me a sense of being very proud of you around school so I do feel like he knows you graduated so I don't know if it's just that if there's something around high school for you or that uh, do you understand this yeah I had my son my senior year and it, oh. it, I actually finished and graduated and everything oh he uh, he shows me he, he just gave me goosebumps because he was so so proud of this so proud of that and wanted to let you know okay and I just feel like, you know, he gives me a feeling of, do you understand at all, Stephanie? Um, there's like a, I got a Ch name, Ch. I don't know if there's a Chuck or Charles, it, like a C-H. Uh, it, it looks like it starts with C-H. So I don't know if you can think of someone in the living or in, in spirit that has a C. And it could be a middle name as well. I can't. At the moment, okay, if it comes to you, let me know in the comments. And we don't know a Chris, right? A C-H name. Okay. Yep. It's interesting. He gives me that. Um, I'm going to leave it in here and then you let me know if, you know, yeah, I think this is what it is, okay? But I feel like, you know, 
Now it's interesting around your your natural father because I feel like he needs permission to step in. And I feel like it, you know of your natural dad. Am I correct, Stephanie? I feel like you knew of him. Yeah. Did he? He, he was okay. A- Let me just give a sense. Like I feel like he comes in, but he doesn't come in big and bold to me. He almost comes in a little I don't want to say the word cowardly, but he almost comes in a little shyly to me. He doesn't really just step in, okay? And so normally that gives me the impression that someone is, you know, that maybe they weren't as there for you as they could have been or should have been. Like they almost have an apology around it, okay? So he almost gives me a sense where either maybe he wasn't the best influence. You know, he gives me the sense of maybe not being the best influence, but I feel a lot of loss around him. Do you understand that? Like a lot of like, where were you? Or, you know, almost abandonment feeling. Can you relate to that, honey? Yeah. Okay. Because he gives me that, but he also gives me, it's weird too, because I feel like, I think he was in the living. So it's not like he passed when you were a child. I think he was around. He just wasn't there for you. Do you understand that? Yeah. And I feel like, are you okay with everything? Because I feel like he kind of wants to own up to some of his stuff. Is that okay? Okay, he gives me um, he gives me a sense where I feel like he always had excuses. Like I get the sense where there was always excuses as to why he wasn't present or why he wasn't there more. Almost like he just wasn't even present in his own life. It's almost like he was focused on something else or someone else. Do you know what I mean? It's like always like, you know, I'm not sure if it's just that he had a whole other family or what was going on, but it's just this weird sense of like, I got to, Almost like, I got to do me. I got to take care of me. I got to kind of, you know, that sort of thing. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I feel like what's interesting is, obviously, he's been passed a little while now. And it gives me a sense of, like, they have to do soul work on the other side. You know, they reflect on their lives. And I feel like through that work, we're starting to see a new, newer side of him. We're starting to see a side where he is more open And I feel like he has come around you so much since he's passed away, like in a very warm, loving way, you know? And I feel like he definitely is around your son, which I think is pretty incredible. There's really a sense of that around him as well, okay? And I feel like, you know, it's just, a. I think he really looked at how much he missed out on like I feel like he very much knows he missed out on things but I also feel like he was not I don't think he was like the healthiest person either do you know it's like there's just something around him that wasn't good or wasn't healthy do you understand that I'll go <laughs> okay because I, I was going to say substances because I felt like there was just something where it was like he was eating himself up from the inside that like, there's just that feeling And I feel like it's interesting that he may have passed from cancer or something feels alcohol related to the passing. Do you understand that? Well, he had cancer for 20 something years and then but he died of like alcoholism. Yeah, that's what it feels like. It it felt felt, that's what I was getting. But was interesting because I feel like all of that alcohol abuse and substance intake was accelerating the cancer you know really was impacting it you know and so i know that you know he has just a lot of regrets around his behavior around his kind of lifestyle just around his um inability to it's really weird it's almost like he had a messy life like literally messy his his house would have been messy that the things feel messy that sort of thing do you understand that yes dirty like you know it, it's it, he didn't he didn't he wasn't the best housekeeper I guess if we say it nicely <laughs> yeah now the other thing that's hard is I feel like what's weird too is I feel like in some ways you still tried to be there for him I feel like you still tried to like show up and be there and it, even you know I think there's just a harshness to him like sometimes he just wasn't nice to you there was just a harshness to his tone and almost a lack of gratitude for you showing up and doing things and taking care of him and he really apologizes for this. He really wants to say he's sorry that he behaved that way. And he wants to let you know that. Okay. And, and he also, what he does give is, you know, I feel 
it's so unfortunate because I feel like if we could pull back those layers, there's like a sense of humor to him. And, and there's like this moments where he could have just been like the most amazing, funny, loving guy, you know, and there's like these little glimmers of it. There's not a whole lot to it, but I just feel like it's like also kind of knowing that that really is who he is underneath of it. So, you know, allowing yourself to hold on to that, okay? Now, Stephanie, I feel like, sweetheart, you are going to have a daughter as well. Do you have a daughter already, or do we just have our son? I have four kids, and there's two boys and two girls. Oh, my goodness. Okay. What's so weird is, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if there's, like, a tiebreaker baby. So, um... Okay, don't look at me like that. Do we not want a tie baby ba- breaker baby? Apparently, <laughs> I they're sailing smooth right now. With how old they are? Okay, okay. It just gives me the feeling where I feel like romance comes in, and I don't know. There's something about this romance that I feel like really builds into something very, very serious, and I just feel like it becomes more of a blended family. Okay, we'll see. Ya. Okay, so now with all that breathing, and I know we want that in our lives, we want that person and that partner and that that person we can really lean on, correct? Yeah. Um, so just allow yourself to, as much as you can, just be open to the universe saying, yeah, you know what, universe, if, if this is what's for best for my highest good, it's game on. I got this, okay? Um, because I feel like, you know, having that openness, especially that openness in the heart is really going to bring them in. I think what's going to be great is I what's wonderful about this relationship is I feel like it's it's going to be a very significant relationship and actually it's going to be a healthy relationship, which I think is very important for you. You know, it's kind of weird. I feel like this it's almost like I get the number three, like this is going to be your third major meaningful relationship. So would you understand that? Um, so I don't know if you've been married twice or had two two relationships that were significant, but this is the third and final significant relationship for you. Yeah, I since my divorce, I'm in the third relationship. Okay, got it. Okay, so what I'm feeling like is there's something very significant and very deep and very powerful about this relationship, okay? So I feel like just allow yourself to be open to it. And also the last thing I'm going to leave you with is Just that, you know, remembering that self-love and that self-care, again, because you are so sensitive and you feel all the energy of people all around you and you're such a caretaker. So what I was just saying is I want you to really make sure you are taking care of yourself, okay? So from here to the year end and going forward, really focus on you. What are your needs? What do you need for yourself? just so that you can be in your highest self. And that's where I feel like that relationship is just going to get stronger, okay? Okay. Thank you. Okay. You are so welcome. Have a beautiful day, honey. You too. Bye. Okay. So let us answer Let us answer some questions. Here we go. Um, what we want to do is, let's see, Shay. I feel like, I do feel like this is going to work, Shay. It just feels like it may be a little bit more of an effort or time consuming, I think, than what you were thinking. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's almost like you tried this once and it didn't quite work, but I feel like it may take a second or third. There's something about a two and a three that I feel like will then help. Um, and that, but I do feel like it's going to be successful. So best of luck to you and keep us posted. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Let's see. Let's wondering if my brother has a message for me, Brooke. Okay, Brooke, I just feel like your brother, uh, well, I don't know. Uh, To be honest, I heard he said he was a knucklehead. So I don't, he goes, I was a knucklehead. So I don't know if he was, if he's joking, but I feel like there's so many things I think for him that. I feel like, again, part of it is just I think that he wished he had be- taken better care of himself. Like there's something around it where there's something around it where he didn't listen to people who were trying to give him advice, listen to people who were trying to help him, um, but especially around health. So he does give me that, but he gives a lot of love to his family and he wants to say, you know, 
he's sorry for any like separation that he may have caused, but he gives me a lot of love around you. And uh, again, he's a, a lot of the shadows are gone. So that feels really beautiful with him. Okay. So I'll leave that with you. So here we go. Let's see. Uh oh. Uh oh, Nicole. A guy just from dated in the past and he wants to reconnect. Do you think I should? You know, Nicole, I, honestly, the first thing that came in was no. So I'm just going to give you what first came in. Um, I, I think if you're strong enough to kind of go, okay, well, let me see. But I just feel like I'm not so sure how strong it is. You know, I don't know if it's super strong or anything like that. It just gives me the sense where I'm not sure how serious he is. So I feel like there's a sense where, uh, you know, I want you to be focused on who you want as a partner and what you need as a partner. And I just feel like in some ways he just wasn't there before. So I'm not exactly I'm not exactly sure he's going to show up for you in, in the right way that you deserve, honey. OK, so I'm just going to give that to you. OK, so here we go. Uh, oh, my God. I heard no and run. OK, you're awesome. Yay. Perfect. Here, here, yes, he was. That's funny. Okay, here we go. Uh, Shay, oh, Shay is on your second treatment plan. Okay, wonderful. Shay, one of the best things I'm going to just share um, is to give yourself permission to relax around the process. You know, you'd be surprised at how much anxiety and nervousness and stress really, really impacts our body and our connection. So I want you to really visualize, try to use breath work, uh, when you're doing everything you need to do, uh, just love that. Okay. Just, just be there and, and feel that. Okay. Um, and I hope that helped. Yeah. See so much is I'm sure, you know, I'm sure it is. It's gotta be awful, but I just get the sense where I want you to just relax around it. And then I feel like that's going to really help the process. Okay. Um, and the other thing too, you know, obviously we're, t we're, we're trusting some medicine, we're trusting some technology, but at the same time, trust the universe, you know, the universe and its timing and what's meant to be and allow that process in as well. This way you don't feel like you have to control the outcome or control the scenario. Okay. And maybe that will, that will help as well, honey. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Let's see if we got anyone else that we have a chance to do a quick one on. Let's see. Oh, Amanda, my identical sister is here too. Ashley, we're cool to tune in together. Well, you two are super, super connected. Okay, so obviously twinsies are. But there's a mother you two share in the spirit world. Okay, so there's a mother I'm feeling in the spirit world. Um, and this may be mother or a grandmother, but she comes in very, very... Um, powerful and very, very strong. And she really gives me the sense of grabbing both of you and saying like that using that energy together for what it is you want to manifest. Okay. So it's not that you have that pressure on one another, but it's very much having that connection to one another. And you'd be surprised at what you're going to be able to manifest together. So that's really interesting. Um, you know, that's interesting that she, she would come in and say that. So I hope you guys can connect to that. Okay. Uh, you are so welcome, Miss Shay. So glad it could help. So, oh, perfect. You're starting a business together. Great. So just know that um, having that business together is going to be huge. I feel like you are going to have a lot of success around it, but you have to use one another, be together and really, really use the strength of one another because it's almost like your strengths are opposite and you fit as a puzzle so and trying one of you is very very stubborn so i'm hearing not to be so stubborn you're gonna have to be open-minded about this okay so so we want to make sure you know um we want to make sure that you are doing that okay and, and just stay there with that okay all right let's see kimberly I'm going on a major 8,000 mile road trip tomorrow. Will it turn out good? I'm hoping it will turn out amazing for you. Okay. I'm um, hoping it will turn out amazing. I feel like it will, you know, it, I feel like she, it, it's going to be good. And let's see. 
Let's see here. I'm just making sure we have a thing here. Let me see, Kimberly. You know, it feels good. I just feel like there's something about replenishing water. So keep an eye keep an eye on water. I don't know if that means your water intake or if you're taking a car, the water intake. So just keep an eye that if you're taking a car that it doesn't overheat, that you're keeping an eye on it. I feel like that's going to be really important to you, okay? But, oh, I'm going to your town, Atlantic City. Yay, we love that. Okay, great. So just know, probably you. Okay, well, let's hope so. So keep an eye on the water intake. Remember that. Um, and that's going to be really, really good, okay? So, yes, the 95 feels good, RV. But I want you to just remember the water thing. So of the RV, look at the water. T just keep an eye on the water. Just promise me you'll do that, okay? Just in case, all right? Not to create any fear. All right, everybody. That is the end of this episode of the Kobe Rebel Show. I want to thank you guys for being here, for joining me. And uh, as always, love the comments. Follow me on Facebook so you know when I'm going live. If you want that reading, you have a chance for a free reading. Okay? So love you too, Kimberly. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody, I'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. Thank you for listening to The Colby Rebel Show. Be sure to follow Colby on social media at Psychic Rebel. And if you've enjoyed this podcast, please head on over to iTunes to leave a review to help Colby grow the tribe. Colby is an international psychic medium, teacher, best-selling author, and speaker. She is a master teacher of the Lisa Williams International School of Spiritual Development and is the owner of the Colby Rebel Spirit Center in Los Angeles. Visit ColbyRebel.com.